for opening him. Hymn 664, Fight the Good Fight. As God's blessings are yours in our worship this morning. Christ gifts together using divine service, setting two. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son Jesus to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. And as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, 
but my words will not pass away. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy help Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb. Blessing and honor and glory. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may live and abide forever in your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost is from Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. The epistle is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord about you that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you. Nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busybodies. Now, such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Holy 
Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. While some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it, therefore, in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict." You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter it, for these are days of vengeance, to fulfill all that is written. Alas for women who are pregnant, and for those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress upon the earth, and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword, and be led captive among all nations." And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. be seated and we'll continue with our hymn of the day hymn 508 the day is surely drawing near <laughs>
grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The text is going to be our epistle from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. St. Paul encourages his dear brothers and sisters in Christ, don't you ever get tired of doing what's right. Don't give up on doing good. Don't give up on serving. Don't give up on working. Don't give up on praying. Because the kingdom of God, your neighbor in need, your own faith, and even your income, they're all at stake here. For whenever we're tempted to slack off or whenever we're tempted to just give up, our faithful Lord establishes us so that we don't grow weary of doing what's right. Our Lord establishes us so that we pray for the word of God to spread and succeed. And our Lord establishes us so that we keep on doing good work at work. So don't grow weary in doing good. What good must we keep on doing? Verse 1. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored, as happened among you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not all have faith. Here God commands us that we are to pray for his kingdom to come. We pray that God's kingdom would come to many, that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored, not just by us, but by many. And don't grow weary of doing this. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy were traveling from city to city, preaching the gospel of Christ. Now, some honored this preaching, but others didn't. And wicked and evil men imprisoned Paul, publicly beat him, and kicked him out of town. And you'd think that Paul would get tired of all this, but he kept on going. He knew that no other name was given from God for men, for our salvation. And because of that, the word of God must speed ahead. And the Thessalonians' prayers kept Paul going. And the same is true even today. Adriel, our evangelist to immigrants, is encouraged to keep on sharing that word of God. And he knows that we are praying for him. Or our seminarians, Jacob, Miguel, Stuart, they're also encouraged to keep on studying, to keep on serving. And yes, they know and appreciate the fact that we pray for them on a regular basis. And the same is true for you. Know that someone's praying for you. And be encouraged. In fact, I'll even pray for you right now. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word has been honored and received even by many here. And we pray that your word would be honored as these, your dear children, confess it. At home, in their neighborhoods, on Facebook, at work, or wherever they go. Let your kingdom come to them and through them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See, sometimes we're tempted to grow weary. And these days, it seems like very few receive or honor God's holy word. And many people today aggressively reject God's word and those who speak it. And because of those things, we may want to give up. But that's exactly why we shouldn't give up. And the Lord is faithful. And he will establish you. And he will guard you against the evil one. Even Christ your Lord was rejected. For not everybody honored Jesus when he preached and taught. And yet Jesus didn't grow weary of doing what's right. He was steadfast all the way to the cross. 
He persisted in bringing the kingdom of God to earth, even though some wicked and evil men would reject him and kill him. But little did they know that Jesus' death and his resurrection would establish you and establish everyone who believes in him forever in his kingdom. And our faithful Lord establishes us so that we don't grow weary of, what's do, of doing what's right. And he establishes us so that we pray for the word of God to speed ahead and to be honored among many. Now, besides prayer, God also commands us to keep on working. Verse 6. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness. You see, we're called, we're not called, we're not called to be a burden on others. We're called to relieve the burdens of others, just like our Savior Jesus. Now, yes, if you're injured, if you're incapacitated or can't work, don't worry. There are other ways to be productive. There are other ways still to be helpful for your neighbor besides work. But what happens if a significant amount of able-bodied people just stop working? Who's going to be able to take care of those who are truly in need if everyone stops working? So what tempts you to walk in idleness? What tempts you to avoid meaningful work? Perhaps you see others who walk around in idleness and either succeed or at least get away with it. And if you've ever seen that, know that this is nothing new. Paul writes almost 2,000 years ago, we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busybodies. So some people may look busy, but aren't really doing anything helpful at work. For example, we call them supervisors, you know, who watch everyone doing the work, but aren't responsible for the people doing the work. We might call them coordinators. They carry clipboards and don't do much else. Or government workers. They make their own messes and then spend their time cleaning up only half of their messes. Yet God commands us to do our work quietly and to earn our living. He tells us, do good work. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord. Now, we're also tempted by our sinful flesh to have bad attitudes toward our work. Our sinful nature wants us to be selfish, thinking more about our own cares more than those than that we thinking about those when we serve. Our sinful nature preaches to us constantly. Well, if you don't like what you do, slack off. Or if you don't like your supervisor, don't work hard. Oh. And your sinful nature will always tell you, you always know what's best and no one else. And in any workplace or in any school, hearts are always tempted to be selfish, rebellious, and arrogant. And these temptations destroy faith and love. Now, your Heavenly Father knows that you and all workers and students are tempted in these ways. And he has given you a cure. The cure for our toxic attitudes and practices is none other than Christ. In fact, your baptism into Christ is a great, powerful remedy. Your laziness has been forgiven by Christ the crucified. And the Lord Jesus drowns your selfish, rebellious, and arrogant desires every single day, dear baptized. So keep on repenting of these things, and don't grow weary. For Christ also gives you a new forgiven heart, that every day, dear baptized, you have a new heart to serve for your neighbor, to honor your supervisor, 
and to productively work for those you serve. You work hard-heartedly for the Lord. We're also tempted when we know that our time for work is almost up. Those who are nearing the end of their careers or at the end of a particular assignment may contract a disease called short-itis. In school, we call it senioritis. In the military, some may even call it road, retired on active duty. And a big thanks to Ken and Sue for filling me in. <laughs> Don't get weary of doing what's right. Keep on going all the way to the end. And I mean, and God means, all the way to the end. Or if you knew that the world was ending soon, would you still work? Hmm. And most likely, this is why Paul warned and encouraged the Thessalonians to work. Because some thought, ah, there's no need to work anymore since Christ is coming to judge the living and the dead soon. And Paul bluntly responds, if you don't need to work, well then you don't need to eat. We'll see how long that lasted. Many people attribute this saying to Martin Luther. Now whether he said it or not, it doesn't matter, but it fits really well with today's lesson. He said, even if I knew that tomorrow the world would end, I would still plant my apple tree today. Fits really well. It encourages us. Keep on going. Don't slack off. After all, Jesus warns us that when he comes, he expects to see us doing our duty in faith towards God and in fervent love toward one another. And besides, time passes quickly when we have plenty worthwhile things to do. And what better way could we have to pass our time knowing that we have something to give through the work of our hands. That as you work, your Heavenly Father is supplying daily bread. That through the labor of your hands, God provides for you. And God provides for your household. And God provides for your pastor and other church workers through your offerings. And for that word of God to continue to spread forth. And God provides for your neighbors in need via charity and taxes. And God provides for those who benefit from you doing a good work at your job. And then, yes, one day, wouldn't you know, huh, look at the time. Jesus is here. Shift over. Time to go to heaven. Amen. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Amen. And we'll remain standing and confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Praise to you, O Lord, for you have done marvelous things and laid bare your arm to save your people. Deliver your church from all her enemies and from those who battle against your word. Sustain us through the fears and trials of these latter days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Glory to you, O Lord, for you have remembered your steadfast love to your people, and you have redeemed them through the blood of your only Son. So strengthen your people in their baptismal identity as your children and in their vocation of worship, witness, love, and mercy work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We acknowledge you, O Lord, that you provide pastors for your church to secure your people in faith through the ministry of your word and sacraments. So guide and direct the work of Pastor Witte and vacancy pastor Clayton Vale and the pastor whom you will provide at Risen Christ in Springfield, Pastor Bernard of First Lutheran Capation, and all pastors in Christ. Raise up faithful pastors in every place and bless the training of seminarians Miguel Gonzalez Feliciano, Jeremy Hansen, Jacob Rhodes, and Stuart Saltzy. Lord, in your mercy. We acknowledge you, O Lord, that you also provide other helping offices for the sake of the church and world. Bless the work of our principal, Beth Landon, and the teachers of Bethlehem Lutheran School. Bless the, the work of the teachers of Risen Christ Lutheran School in Springfield. Bless the teachers of our Sunday school, missionaries Aaron McKenzie and Adriel George, that the word of the Lord, which endures forever, would continue to speed forth and be honored among many. Lord, in your mercy. Holy are you, O Lord, and mighty. You will judge the world with righteousness and your people with equity. Bless us with good and faithful leaders and government to serve your purposes, defend your people, punish the evildoer, and encourage virtue everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. Faith or God, you have given us rich and abundant promises, and you have promised to be with us in all adversity and need. Be with those who cry to you in any need of body, mind, or soul, and grant them grace sufficient for all their needs. Especially, we pray for those who mourn the death of Dayton Police Detective Del Rio. We pray for Nesta Harris, Jonathan Feeney, Jean DeCamp, Mary Seebeck, Jennifer England, Roseanne Buffet, Marilyn Choi, Melita Murphy, Aradine Wolliver, Mimi Carraway, Loretta Johansson, Randy and his grandmother who just lost their house. We pray for Georgia Meyer, Earl Downs, Gil Denzer, Bonnie Denzer, Larry Hyden, Paula, Nina, Amanda, and those we name in our hearts before you now. Deliver them according to your will, and grant them to rest upon the firm foundation of your grace and favor, and to keep them through their days of trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Just a reminder that we at Bethlehem do practice closed communion, which means you may commune with us if you are baptized, (laughs) instructed in Luther's small catechism, and publicly confess your adherence to the small catechism, and are currently a member of Bethlehem Lutheran Church or a sister church of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. If you're not sure, this doesn't describe you, I ask that you do not commune today. I'd be happy to visit with you another time and discuss more about receiving the Lord's Supper here at Bethlehem. And we'll continue with the offering.
Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Amen. We stand and sing the offertory. salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father everlasting god through jesus christ our lord who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver, and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
Body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you both in body and in soul until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Lord, now your servant, your servant, go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the name. And the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feasts of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.